Okay, thank you everybody for um, attending this uh, webinar. Um, my name is Matthew Anderson. Um, I'm a director of MBBC and it's a pleasure to host you all today. Uh, my colleague Roger Nunn here as well, who will also be um, chairing the session with me. Um, this video, this session is recorded, so uh, it will end up on our YouTube channel um, in the uh, in the not too distant future. So uh, just to make you aware of that. Um, so welcome to yet again another one of our webinars. Um, circumstances mean we've become quite good at running these now. We've, we've had quite a few now with different speakers and the like. And um, we're absolutely delighted today that we have got Dahan Ahmed Mahmood, who is, amongst other things, a former foreign minister in Mauritania, former minister of information, former minister of religious studies. So has quite literally been at the heart of Mauritanian government for um, many, many years. Uh, he's now a director of the Think Mauritania Think Tank. Um, so uh, he's going to talk to us for about 30 to 40 minutes today on a range of issues, which will be extremely interesting. And then uh, there's a bit of time at the end for questions. Um, just to let you know a bit of um, MBBC news, as I mentioned, we have a YouTube channel. The previous webinars are all on there, so go and subscribe to that and we can all become YouTube stars. Um, we do hope to resume physical events in London as soon as possible, and obviously the rollout of the vaccine makes that, uh, we can have some confidence that that will be um, around about uh, you know, the sort of Easter time and, and beyond in the UK, we'll, we may be able to have physical events again with some certainty. Um, we are still planning a trade mission to Mauritania um, in the first week of March. Obviously, that's under review and we are aware there's been a very small spike in, in numbers in uh, Mauritania at the moment, but you know, we'll keep an eye on these things. Uh, may prove to be just a little bit too early, so we may reschedule it for later in the year, but uh, we'll see. We're still certainly planning for that for that first uh, second week of March to bring a delegation to Mauritania. Um, I think that's that's it now. Um, I'm going to um, hand you over to our speaker for today um, and uh, enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to give this talk. I intend to make a presentation of Mauritania, of its strengths, its weaknesses. I'll also speak of opportunities and uh, dynamics that uncover some of the future of what tomorrow could look like, could, uh, look like in Mauritania. First, I must confess that since the day when a, a parcel that was sent to me via DHL by a Spanish friend of mine, went to Mauritius and took a long time to find its way back to Nouakchott. I have been of the idea that it might be useful to give some geographical data of the country before speaking about other aspects. Mauritania covers an area of 1,000 square, more than 1,000 square kilometers. Our population is around four and a half million of whom 80% are Arab speaking and 20% non-Arab speaking. The length of our border is 5,800 kilometers. No natural obstacle closes the border except the one with Senegal, which is constituted by a river that can be easily crossed over in, on its entire length. The border with Mali is by far the longest which makes it most difficult to monitor and thus the most dangerous. Nevertheless, it is also our main gate to the G5 group of countries of the Sahel that we consider essential for our security and our development. The French, their esprit cartesien, were adamant not to let the African under their rule join Hands. So they decided to make the, their colonies in Africa of two significant parts, North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa, with no link between the two, ignoring those who are in the connecting zone. It happened that those who are in the connecting zone are us, Mauritania, and the whole lot of countries of the South. 
we are at the origin of the creation of the Sahel G5 group. Composing this regional group have, have similar security and development problems. In all of them, the ethnical composition of the population is a mixture of sub-Saharan and North African. So uh, most of the challenges of facing the country derive from this geographical situation. Our perspective is that the solutions are also to be worked out this frame. Now, let me make a small SWOT type presentation of Mauritania. Speaking about our strengths, I'll begin with the political field. And in this aspect, I want to highlight four things. There has never been a bloody change of power in Mauritania since its independence. Mauritanians are used to plurality and all opinions are present in the parliament, in the press and in the street. There is no political prisoner in Mauritania. Our country has witnessed a peaceful position of power between a president who could not be candidate as enshrined in our constitution and a new president who since his arrival in August 2019 has committed himself and his government to call down the political arena and he has succeeded to right the wrongdoing of the former administration and to fight corruption. One can say that good steps have been done in this endeavor to put the country on the path of growth and modernity. The government seemed to take true steps in that direction. Speaking about our economical strengths, I'll begin with something that might appear strange but if you give it a second thought, you will perceive the importance. It's our geographical situation. Mauritania is a bridge between Maghreb Union and ECOWAS countries. In December 2019, Mauritania signed African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. Our uh, economical mining strengths are well known, the iron ore is one of the most valuable assets of the country. SNIM, the national company, is exporting around 12 million of high quality iron ore yearly. In 2020, with the flooding of mines in Brazil and the problems of COVID-19 and the wildfire in Australia, Mauritania, which did not stop producing, did profit of the rise in the price of iron ores when they reached 130 tons before going down a little bit. A Canadian company, First Quantum Minerals, is exploiting a copper mine 250 kilometers northeast of Nouakchott. Another Canadian company, Kilros, is exploiting a mine uh, of gold 100 kilometers north of Nouakchott. An Australian company, Aura Energy, have project concerning uranium, gold, soda ash, and lithium in the north of the country. Good quantities of oil and gas have been found. We hope that would begin the exploitation of uh, the big field, uh, Tortu Ahmaim, in 2024 or 2025. The new thing here is gold panning, which is giving very good result both in production and employment. Some 50,000 persons are said to be working in panning. Speaking of our agricultural strengths, I'll say that we have a large livestock and we export to neighboring countries like lambs, calves, and camels, and we cover all our needs in meat. We have a million hectare fertile land a quarter of which are irrigable lands on the river Senegal bank. Though till now only 7% are cultivated, we already cover more than 60% of our needs in rice. In the fishing field, Mauritania has fish bearing waters. In 2018, 
the result was around 960 million dollars more than 900 from uh, exportation and 600 as a result of the agreement with the eu but this year exportation have dropped due to the lockdown of restoration and travel all over the world another strength is our youth the population is young and as such offers both workers and consumers the average age of Mauritanian is less than 20 years. They are generally healthy, entrepreneur, and good traders. One strength that is important everywhere and very important in the Sahel is security. Mauritania offers very good security condition. There has been no incident linked to terrorism in the country since 2011. Mauritania is classified by the Global Terrorism Index, Australian, I think, among the countries with lowest terrorism risk. Now, what are the weaknesses? Speaking of about our weaknesses, I begin with the political ones. And uh, I'll say that our society is in transition between modernity and tradition. And as such, it is still dealing with its democracy in an inappropriate way. So most of the parliament members, except those of Nwakshot and Wazibu and those of the nationalists, are elected thanks to their family ties and tribal links. And I'll say that those family ties and tribal links are often used to try to influence the neutrality and the efficiency of our public service. Speaking of uh, uh, economical weaknesses, I have already said that we have had a very sharp fall in our uh, fishing exportation, 30% following the COVID-19 crisis and the aftermath of slowing of the world economy and the closing of restoration and travel activities. And it is hard to know when this sector will become again one of the driving sectors of our economy. In another area, I want to pinpoint the, the fact that there are practically no industries and most of the products that we use in the country are coming from outside, which put a heavy burden on our trade balance. Due to this situation, any increase in the income of the Mauritanians will add to the trade deficit and increase the size of the burden. In this field, the lockdown due to the COVID-19 has, as it has done in uh, most countries of the world, shown the danger of relying completely for some vital supplies on the international market. The crisis in Gergarat between Morocco and Polisario has put the supply in fruit and vegetables in disarray, both in Nouakchott and Nouadhibou. Speaking of the weaknesses in the social field, I'll draw the attention on three things. The first one is breaking the rule is a national sport in Mauritania. And it is not rare in Nouakchott to see more than one car drive through the red light unless a policeman is watching. Tax evasion is giving headaches to those in charge of the curriculum. The second thing is that unemployment is hitting heavily our youth. And the third one is that uh, migration from the southern uh, sub-Saharan countries is continuous to Mauritania. Because of the insecurity in some neighboring countries and the envy to use our country as a stage on the road to Europe. But due to the containment of migration following the agreement between Mauritania and the EU, and because of the jobs they encounter in some specialized area, many stay now in Mauritania. The problem is that in 2019, after the presidential election, hundreds of them participated in manifestation and looting hundreds of Malian and tens of other sub-Saharan nationalities have been arrested and expelled, but they can come back. Borders are wide open with ECOWAS countries. 
in this situation, what are the opportunities and the threat? I go back to the geographical situation. As I said before, the geographical situation is an asset. And that is because Mauritania being a bridge between Maghreb Union and ECOWAS, being a gate to the Sahel countries, being in such proximity to Europe, all these combined offers to investors huge possibilities that go far beyond what apparently off is offered by the size of our population and the level of our rent. Our inclusion in the ACP group allow goods from Mauritania to enter EU without tax. In the mining field, one thing is noticeable, I think it is rare in Africa right now, it is a fact that four majors, BP, Exxon, Shell and Total are still prospecting in our waters. There are still very good possibilities of oil and gas inland in Taudenli Basin and nearby. But prospectors have given up in this remote area for multiple reasons. The quantity of iron ores are very important. Rare earth, phosphate, gold, uranium have been found in different parts of the country. To help the mining sector, water to the northern, uh, bringing water to the northern part of the country is already an option through a PPP financing. A pipe carrying desalinated water from the sea to Agjush, Atta, will, in addition to covering the population needs, improve greatly mining condition. A study is ready. The specification will be drawn up soon to see how this can be done and how much it will cost. The preliminary study oscillate between 4 and 4.5 billion US dollars. Legal procedures also are an asset in Mauritania. It is noticeable on the legal field, everything is done to attract foreign investors. There is no law prohibiting or limiting foreign investment which can target any sector of the economy. There are no laws or regulations specifically authorizing private firms to adopt article or incorporation or association which limit or prohibit foreign investment participation or control. There are no other practices to buy private firm to restrict foreign investment. The government continues to prioritize foreign investment in all sectors of the economy. It is working closely with the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank and the international donor community to improve basic infrastructure and to update laws and regulations. So what are the threat to this uh, situation? Speaking of the threat, I'll cite only two, not meaning that there are no others, but because these two have a special relevance. The first one is Western Sahara. The non-resolution of the conflict is putting big pressure on all Maghreb countries. Specialists say that every Maghreb country is losing yearly at least between two and three points of growth. Due to the geographical situation, Western Sahara is encrusted in Mauritania, suffers more of the non-resolution of the conflict. The second threat is the security in the neighboring Sahel countries. Despite our wish and our will, security is not coming quick enough to all the G5 Sahel countries. After this SWOT presentation, I would like to say that the year 2020 bring some new things that like black swans that were not in the reckoning. The first black swan was the COVID-19. The figures might not be very alarming, less than 10,000 cases and less than 200 deaths, but the effect on the economy and the population has been very important. Our health sector was not ready for the pandemic. The informal sector employ that employs a lot of people has been hit very hard. 
there has been a fall in our exportation, mainly fishing, 30%, as I said before. A drop in the GDP of 9.5. The country was expecting to grow 6.3. And by the end of 2020, it will be down 3.2. That uh, total is 9.5 loss. Nevertheless, there have been no major disruption in the execution of programs that uh, the country follows with the IMF. And the economists have an expectation of a 2.1 growth in 2021. Among the measures that the government has taken to counter the bad effects of COVID-19, I would like to highlight the creation of a special fund for the fight against the virus and for the social health. The fund was alimented by the state and the particulars. The management of the fund is very transparent. Some 27% of the population, the poorest, in 8,119 towns, villages, and other agglomerations all over Mauritania have received direct financial help. And this will be renewed by the end of the year. The electrical and water bills of the poorest have been paid by the fund. The second wave of COVID-19 is hitting the country right now. And I fear that it might be more dreadful than the first one because it is happening with the arrival of the cold weather. And people, like in many places, are not very cautious. The second black swan was the loss of great part of the rice harvest. The rain in the Sahel countries used to come at approximately the same time. But this year, it came earlier. And with the lack of uh, harvesters and skilled staff to use the existing ones, much of the rice crop was lost, from 39%. The second rice harvest is due by the end of December, but they are expecting losses because of the flood, the rats, and the birds. Let me say that 2020 will not be a good year for the rice production. The third black swan was the crisis of Gargarat. The crisis of Western Sahara is still unsolved. And the parties are trying to push their pawns every now and then. Moroccan have succeeded to convince some friendly countries like UAE, Jordan, and others to open consulate in El Ayoun, the Western Sahara biggest city. On the other hand, Moroccans good flow through the Gargarat, into Mauritania, and across Mauritania to other African countries. In 2019, more than 67 million tons of goods were spotted by the Moroccan customs at the Gargarat border coast. Now, when the Sahrawi want to make a remembrance of their problem, they send civilians to the Gargarat and they block the traffic. They used to lift the blocking of the border after the UN decision on the MINURSO, which mandate is renewed yearly. This time, they closed the border on October the 21st, and they didn't lift the closing when the mandate of the MINURSO was extended on October the 30th. They left only when expelled by the Moroccan army on November 13th. Tension ever since is high. While the Gargarat border was closed, the post was closed, fruit and vegetables, when found, sky, prices were skyrocketing in Nouakchott and Bazil. The fact is that the, block, the lockdown due to the COVID-19 and the crisis of Gargarat have had an important impact on the Mauritanians. The need to act in order to diminish the dependence on the outside has been recognized. So programs to bolster agricultural production are put in place. Mauritanian felt the harsh situation created by the Gargarat crisis. And the ministers of agriculture and commerce are effectively working together to improve greatly the offer of local supply for vegetables. 
Before ending this intervention, I want to signal the fact that the Ministry of Petroleum, Mining and Industry is working on a new strategy with four targets. First target is to simplify the rules. Mining companies are now working with different rules, depending on the date of their authorization, due to the fact that the mining code has been changing. The aim is to make our mining sector more attractive to investors and more competitive among world mining offers. The second aim of the target of this uh, strategy is to make the mining sector more profitable for Mauritania. The third one is to act in, on infrastructure development to support the mining sector. I have spoken about the water supply for the moment. And the fourth is to devote the sector contribution to environmental preservation and social welfare. Exchanges around this strategy are being held between the different actors of the sector, and the strategy might be ready in the second half of 2021. As a conclusion, it is true that Mauritania is a poor country in a difficult environment, but it is secure and stable. And our citizens are not part of those who crowd at the gate of Europe or die trying to reach it. I think that good opportunities are there to grasp for investors, thanks to the, its geographical situation, its possibilities in the fields of mining, fishing and agriculture. One can have reasonable hopes to see Mauritania have a rapid growth and an accelerated transition to modernity. Thank you for your attention, and I am ready to answer a question in the limit of my knowledge. Thank you very much indeed for that uh, presentation. Very clear, um, uh, very, uh, as I say, very clear, very, very informative and very interesting. So thank you for that. Um, I'm going to open it up for uh, questions now. If you would like to uh, ask a question, uh, please unmute yourself and uh, and uh, ask your uh, question. Anybody like to ask the first one? Excellency, thank you for uh, the excellent presentation and coverage. We had interest in uh, Mauritania for some time now. We are aware of the potential exist in the country and hopefully there will be a, a more links in, in particular within a number of areas such as oil and gas and mm -hmm. uh, uh, aquaculture fish farming. Uh, my questions, I think your Excellency mentioned uh, briefly in the, in the beginning, but uh, what actually free trade agreements, um, uh, regional free trade agreements, Mauritania is part of, whether with Africa or Arab world or Europe? Uh, I'm not aware of all the agreements. I should, uh, I have said that we have signed in December uh, 2019, the, all the agreement with uh, the ECOWAS countries, so ECOWAS countries are open, wide open. We are part of what is ACP and uh, that are African and Carib Pacific countries that can export to Europe without uh, fees. Uh, in the Arab world, it's the problem of uh, the Sahara is blocking uh, the difficulties between uh, Maghreb countries, but uh, there are normally no problems with uh, the two who are close to us, uh, Algeria and uh, Morocco and even Tunisia. Thank you very much. Um, I'll ask a question if I may. Um, I really liked your uh, analysis of, of strengths and, and weaknesses. Um, I, I wondered where you would place education. Is it a strength or a, or a weakness or, or, or a bit of both? We are, education is the biggest problem that we have. And uh, I think Matthew has been working some part of this. We really need to have a very huge move in the country for education. And it is, uh, beginning everywhere it is uh, uh, the ministry now is doing some uh, reforms but we need more than what 
ever has been done here because the level of uh, youth is the, the, the children's the number are growing and uh, for a long time Mauritania has been saying what let's work on the quantities and leave the quality and this is hitting us now right now very hard uh, but I, I think uh, since four or five years we are uh, very much aware and uh, good steps are uh, done i have the when i spoke about what they were doing i said he has said he has called down the uh, political arena this is okay he's fighting against uh, corruption and uh, the wrongdoing of the former this is going uh, good step and the other is uh, they say they are going to do it <laughs> that's what i can say all right thank thank you dahani we um have a question from uh, from michael dennison michael do you want to unmute yourself and uh, and ask your question yeah, my question is about the relationship between mauritania and the gulf states the gcc states uh how do you rate the relationship between mauritania and these states who who's the closest to mauritania and how do you think given their financial resources how do you think that relationship will develop um, and, and will it change with the change of leaders? We have always uh, had good relation with uh, Gulf countries. Our relation with Kuwait is, uh, has always been the, the good for all the time. Uh, I think also that they are uh, the country to whom we owe more uh, money and uh, but the relation with kuwait are always very good uh, the country with whom we have more uh, commercial activity from the gulf countries is uh, uae uh, the countries with whom we have uh, more uh, links in many of the cultural uh, economical uh, and everything and it's uh, Saudi Arabia but uh, let's say that these three are these the three countries are uh, very important for Mauritania Saudi Arabia UAE and Kuwait but all the countries of the Gulf we have uh, good relations there are no problems uh, there have been some difficulties with uh, their internal relation and Mauritania I think uh, uh, sided with those against uh, Qatar, but uh, we were not against Qatar. We, we are waiting for them and hope that the solution will be fine for their internal problems. We don't intervene in their difficulties, inner difficulties. Can I just add a follow on to that uh, question? Um, there was a note in the newspaper last year, maybe. A year and a half ago about um uae investing two billion dollars where i mean do you know where that's going because i can't see any evidence of it and it's partly my job to look for where the investment is i read that uh, but uh, i don't know it i think most of it is might be private because uh, there are many activities here the private sectors uh, uh, by the uae UAE, the, I say, the, the, I think it is maybe the first uh, commercial partner of Mauritania or uh, something like that. It's uh, very important here. Uh, they have been uh, working in small things like uh, a farm uh, to export blueberries to UK <laughs> in the south of Mauritania to building uh, Aeolian uh, centrals for Nwadibu, they are intervening in very lots, uh, lots of, but I am not uh, aware of where these two billions were, because it, it were, are going. Uh, well, we'll find out in due course, I expect, yes. Right, Any uh, anybody else like to ask a question? Please unmute yourself and ask it if you would like to. I had a, a quick one, Roger, um, about fishing noting that we're very soon to have Brexit in the UK. 
I just wanted to clarify the numbers that uh, Dahan gave for the fishing industries and the destination of the fish products. Normally, the, the fish products are in three sizes, three type. There is a type that normally goes to Japan. It is the, the most expensive. They go to Japan. These are Japanese who buy this. Uh, and the second level goes normally to Europe and it was uh, mainly Italian uh, buyers. I don't know where, where they go with that, but uh, mainly Italian buyers and uh, Spanish buyers. The low quality, the, 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 the small fish, this go to Africa and uh, these are the three types of uh, cells, but uh, you have all uh, seen what the OCDE put on this uh, blue economy for uh, with this uh, COVID-19 problems that it will take a while before it goes up. And I have said that I don't, I don't know when uh, the fishing sector, which is, it was till last year, one uh, of the driving sectors of our economy, when it will get this uh, position uh, anew. Because this year, uh, exportation of gold have been more than exportation of fish. It has never happened before 2020. Thank you for that. Uh, we have a question from Yasin Bukhara. Yasin, would you like to unmute yourself and, uh, and ask your question? I'm uh, Yasin Bukhara. I run a private equity business uh, in Dubai, uh, specialized in investing in North Africa. We're looking at Mauritania at the moment, quite uh, interesting opportunities uh, that we're looking at. And, uh, and uh, you know, the main question I have for you is, do you believe that uh, Maghreb integration is possible? Yes. And if yes, so what would be your ideal scenario? D difficult question. Huh? <laughs> we hope, we all hope that uh, Maghreb countries need to integrate. They, I have said that uh, every Maghreb country is lo losing between two and three points of growth because of the lack of uh, integration. And uh, we need this, we need it badly in every country, the biggest one and the smallest one like mine, we need this integration to work together to have uh, some uh, around 100 million consumers and uh, workers. And, uh, and I think if I, we do that, we do, no Maghrebian will cross uh, the, the, the Mediterranean to the other side. The other will come, and, <laughs> but uh, situation is difficult because of the political problem of the Sahara. The problem is when the, they made the Maghreb Union, the problem of the Sahara was there. They could have keep working and trying to solve it, like the problem of Gibraltar, or the problem of Septa in Melilla, or Septa, all the problems everywhere in the world. And they leave this aside and they work and the jobs and the people. And, but uh, still there are some uh, people that are very hard on uh, these questions as political, losing money, losing uh, uh, generation. And uh, it's difficult in the Maghreb. It's very difficult. And I think now with the COVID and uh, one must not be, let's say, so optimistic that uh, to think that there will not be every now and then a new virus or a new problem, it is important to integrate regionally and uh, to have the possibilities of putting everything together. And uh, uh, I hope that uh, they will uh, <laughs> perceive this and any further questions from anybody please uh, unmute yourself and ask your uh, question if you would like to on a, on a more optimistic note one of the things that uh, i think those of us who've been to mauritania we can see that there is an opportunity for tourism um 
I mean, I guess a sort of two part question. I know when we first met, I think we talked about the uh, the dates produced around Chinghetti and things like that, the, um, the, but the, not in sufficient quantities. But also Chinghetti, um, if you follow Visit Mauritania on Instagram, you will see fantastic pictures of Chinghetti and other places on a, on a daily basis. So it's apparent there is a huge well, I'm so huge. There's a there's a certainly a medium sized potential for a, uh, a sort of more adventure holiday destination. Uh, people who don't want to go to Spain, for example. Um, uh, and I, I just wondered, what do you think about that? I mean, obviously, COVID and um, has played a, a, a part in this. But assuming no COVID, assuming that the Foreign Office do um, amend their travel advice as they look likely to do, hopefully. Um, what do you think about the possibility for tourism in Mauritania? Are you aware that, that I am from Shingeti? <laughs> I am from Shingeti, so yes, oh, yes, I know that. normally from tourism. <laughs> we live normally from tourism, but this year it's difficult. And the situation, the country is very interesting and there are very beautiful places, bibliotheques and things like that. But uh, we hope that after the, I have seen the first uh, person being vaccinated yesterday in your country, and uh, maybe after uh, six or eight months, uh, we'll be going, uh, the people will be moving again, and uh, that is very good for fishing and for tourism. <laughs> yeah. That will be very good for uh, fish and tourism. Yeah. Our fishing uh, products will be exported and uh, people will come. Just on the business tourism side of it, I mean, we we all, those of us who've been to Mauritania, we generally fly into Nouakchott and fly out of Nouakchott and we never leave. So places like Chinguetti, places like um, Nwadibu don't generally feature on the uh, on the sort of British uh, business traveller. What do you know, what what sort of opportunities business-wise, industries, what sectors would be of interest to people? I mean, I know Nwadibu is the business capital, but we tend not to go there because of the government. No, it, 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 the, the tourist, uh, when one comes, and Nouakchott has been built in 1960. And it is an awful town. It is, it, it is here. It is, we are everyone. And it's a, but it's not a place to visit. But near Nouakchott, on the river Senegal, you have a place with any kind of birds that come from Europe and stay here. Uh, going to Nwadibu, there is also a big place with uh, birds and uh, animals. There is a place where they have uh, this fishing, traditional fishing, using uh, dolphins. They go to the sea and they put uh, with uh, some uh, big uh, bats, they tap the water and the dolphin thinks that they, these are fish. <laughs> so they come and the fish comes before them and they take the fish. And these are places that are wonderful in, in the in, inner land of uh, Mauritania. I remember a place where there are, you find, this is a desert country, find crocodiles. And they stay there the, the, during the whole year underground. And when the rain comes and they, they get out and uh, there are things that can be seen here that are absolutely wonderful and uh, I think I invite to come and to visit uh, Mauritania because uh, it is secure, there is no problem, and, uh, but you have to come in the cold season between October and April. After that, maybe the temperature is a little high for you, European. Yes, it'd be very welcome to have a bit of Mauritanian temperature at the moment in, in London. But, so I, uh, I said I had a question, but Matt uh, actually asked that my question was about tourism as well. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's all right. I won't uh, hold it against you. Um, looks like uh, we've asked all the questions so it simply remains for me to uh, say Dahan thank you very much indeed for um, taking the time to talk to us uh, great talk thank you so much for answering all the questions they were a very wide-ranging set of questions but um, 
you answered them all with, uh, you know, with your with your customary style and broad knowledge of, uh, of Mauritania. So, uh, on behalf of the MBBC and those friends who've uh, who've joined this uh, this uh, uh, webinar, we um, thank you very much indeed. And uh, all I can say is that we look forward to seeing you in Mauritania in the Act Shot when we are uh, able to uh, to travel. As Matt said, we do have plans for uh, a trade mission and. Uh, we are uh, hoping very much that uh, we can run it quite soon in 2021, but uh, of course it will depend on uh, it will depend on COVID. So, uh, but again, thank you very much indeed, and thank you to all of you for uh, attending. And we will see you at the uh, the next MBBC webinar. Thank you very much. Bye bye.